Welcome to the lecture of DSP processor introduction. Now what are this digital signal processor? Digital signal processors are microprocessors. Digital signal processors take real world signal like voice, audio, video, temperature, pressure, position. These signals are digitalized and then uh, these processors mathematically manipulate these signals. The DSP processors are designed for performing mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and they perform these mathematical operations very quickly. The signal which is to be given to this digital signal processors need to be processed so that the information that contain they contain can be displayed, analyzed, or converted to another type of signal that may be of use. So, for example, uh, here the MP3 audio player diagram or block diagram is shown, which uses a DSP processor. So, during the recording phase, analog audio is input through a receiver or other source. This analog signal is then converted to digital signal by analog to digital converter and it is passed to the DSP processor. The processor performs the MP3 encoding and saves the file to memory. During the playback phase, the file is taken from memory, decoded by the DSP processor and then converted back to analog signal through digital to analog converter. So, it can be output through the speaker system. The DSP processor would perform other functions such as volume control, equalization and user interface. This is the diagram which will explain the same uh, type of application. This is the use of Texas instrument DSP in MP3 pl player. Because of its characteristics of high computation and high speed, the DSP can be used in wide variety of applications. Here few applications are listed. For example, first application is in the field of communication that is related to broadband. It can be used in voice, uh, video conferencing, uh, voice multimedia over IP, digital media gateway. For wireless communication application, it can process a data of satellite phone, base station. Then in consumer electronics, it can be used in security type of application like biometric, video surveillance, then in entertainment, it can process a still or video camera data. It can use in digital radio, a portable media player, entertainment console. In to toys, it can use in interactive toys or video game console. It has a lot of application in industry and entertainment field. Like in medical, it can process MRI data, ultrasound data, X-ray data. It can use in scanner, welding machine, vending machine. Then the factory automation, industrial machine, motor control, and vision system. Then in military application, it can be used uh, to process uh, radar data, sonar data, avionics, digital radio. Uh, then target detection, it can be used for target detection also. So lot of applications are there for this digital uh, signal processor which can process on lot of data, which can perform a lot of computation. And for doing this, it is having a special hardware. So just go through the evaluation of this uh, DSP processor. In the late 1970s, there were many chips aimed at digital signal processing. However, they are not considered to be digital signal processing because of their limited programmability 
or their lack of hardware features such as hardware multipliers that multiplier and uh, division blocks were not implemented in hardware so it is the software implementation of multiplication and division takes lot of time the first marketed chip to qualify as a programmable dsp was nec's mpd7720 uh, that was manufactured in 1981 and it had a hardware multiplier and uh, it adopted the harvard architecture the another early dsp was tms320 c10 which is which was marketed by ti in 1982 from a market evolution view point we can divide the two and a half decades of dsp life span into two phases a development phase which lasted until the early 1990s and the consolidation phase lasting until now now what is inside a dsp processor it has a program memory the program of this dsp processor is stored in program memory dsp processor fetches the instruction from program memory and executes it it has a data memory the data is stored in this memory then it has compute engine this compute engine performs the math processing operation it accesses the program from program memory and data from data memory and operates on this data as per the instructions stored in program memory then it has input output uh, devices input output port to interface the external devices it has serial port timers host port external port link port etc what is the current scenario of dsp processor the number of dsp vendors are limited uh, the main important vendors are listed here that is analog devices adi freescale formerly it was called as motorola texas instrument uh, rensys microchip very silicon so out of this the two important vendors are ti and adi so different family members are available of this both vendors so ti is having a lot of versions of tms 320c uh, family 2x 5x 6x now 7x 8x so 2x is used for digital signal controllers 5x is used for power efficient applications 6x is used for high performance application whereas the adi processor shark it is used for medium performance tiger shark is used for high performance for multi processor system and black fin which is also popular dsp processor is used for high performance and low power applications now the main requirement for dsp hardware so software tool evolution of dsp processor the code compilers are now available which can deal with the hardware complexity and enhance dsp architecture uh, this uh, compilers are allow the developer to program more efficiently in high level languages like embedded c languages than the assembly coding now this uh, increases the speed of uh, uh, computation or speed of development of embedded system and they are easy uh, for different platforms the advanced tools are also available like for example matlab code generation uh, is also available where user can write a code for a dsp processor and it can be uh, downloaded elements of dsp hardware can be categorized into four different uh, factors like first is fast data access 
to have a fast access of data we need high bandwidth memory architectures specialized addressing modes must be there to process on the data then there must be a direct memory access dma controller so that we can interface to external devices peripherals quickly then second uh, part is fast computation so to achieve this uh, dsp processor must need a mac unit that is called a mac centered unit that it must have a pipelining architecture so that more blocks can perform operations simultaneously which will increase the speed of operation then it must have a parallel architecture like vliw simd which will also improve the speed of operation the third parameter is numerical fidelity so the result should be accurate we need a accurate result so for that wide accumulator resistors guard bits are also available in dsp processor and for fast execution control hardware assisted zero overlaid loop shadow register uh, this uh, blocks are also available in dsp processor so these are few important hardware requirements for dsp processor types of architectures so you have already studied von neumann architecture and howard architecture a dsp processor uses super uh, architecture super harvard architecture which is a modified harvard architecture we'll discuss this architecture one by one in von neumann architecture the program memory and data memory is same so same memory is used as a program memory and data memory so address bus is also same for both this memory data bus is also same for both this memory the advantage of von neumann architecture is that the hardware is simple because there is only one address bus and one data bus to access both program memory and data memory but due to this the speed of operation is slow because at a time the cpu can access either program or either data so this is the main disadvantage of von neumann architecture the speed is less the second type of architecture is harvard architecture in harvard architecture program memory is different and data memory is different so cpu uh, ha has a different address bus and different data buses to access this program memory and data memory the disadvantage of this harvard architecture is uh, the complication in hardware we need a uh, different address buses and different data buses but the advantage of harvard architecture is that processing is fast since the buses are different Uh, the processor can uh, read a data fetch the instruction and it can fetch a data simultaneously for dsp processor harvard architecture and von neumann architecture uh, won't give a best result because uh, these processors are developed for real time and embedded applications the dsp processor with howard and von neumann architecture are also available but we need a special hardware for dsp processor so for dsp processor super howard architecture is generally used that is shark architecture so this is a harvard architecture with some extra block so it has a separate program memory and separate data memory but along with this it has a instruction cache memory due to this cache memory the speed of instruction fetching will be faster so cache memory is a static ram memory which is costly but speed of operation of this uh, static ram memory is very high 
so the program which is currently executing can be stored in instruction cache memory which is of smaller size than the actual main program memory so part of program which cpu is currently executing can be stored in a cache memory and instead of reading a instruction every time from main program memory now cpu can in read program instruction from cache memory it will save the time of cpu so time required to read a data from main memory is always higher than time to read a instruction from cache memory because cache memory is faster and we cannot replace whole program memory by the static uh, rom, rom memory that is a cache memory because the cost of this uh, static memory is higher then it is having a data memory and it is having a fast io controller because of this the interfacing of this uh, processor with io devices is faster so these modifications are done in harvard architecture and it is called as a super harvard architecture so dsp processor uses this super harvard architecture now here the typical block diagram of dsp processor is shown which is having a program memory then there is program data address generator uh, data memory address generator program sequencer is there instruction cache memory is there then two separate data buses are there one for program memory one for data memory data registers are there multiplier is there uh, hardware multiplier unit is used uh, which will increase the speed of multiplication operation uh, alu is there and shifter is also implemented in hardware because of this we can shift our data in left or right direction number of times in one clock signal this is the advantage of hardware implementation along with this it is having a io controller that is dma controller direct memory access controller so which will interface the io devices directly to memory instead of using cpu for data transfer from io devices to memory this dma controller will directly transfer data from io devices to memory tms 320 c67xs family it has a two level of cache memory that means it has uh, a level 1 program cache memory level 1 data cache memory and also it has a level 2 cache memory which is used for dma controller peripheral so because of this cache memory the program access time is reduced data access time is reduced and also the data which comes from peripheral device says or which is given to peripheral device is also reduced so because of this two level cache memory the speed of operation of c67xs family member is very high this is the hierarchy of this memory so first there are registers which are associated with alu then there is a level 1 cache in this case level 1 cache is the cache memory associated with program memory and cache memory associated with, with the data memory then l2 cache that is associated with peripheral devices and l3 cache memory which is associated with external memory devices so thank you for watching this video